So I'm um, Starly Coleman. I work at the Goldwater Institute. The Goldwater Institute is a public policy research and litigation organization. So we kind of do the same sort of things that NORD does, right? Like we come up with policy solutions to problems that we see facing um, regular Americans. Um, and so that's a kind of why we are involved in this space. A couple of years ago, um, we started having uh, conversations with um, we're, we're headquartered in Phoenix, and there's a lot of interesting medical innovation happening in, um, in Phoenix. The Human Genome Project and a bunch of other stuff is all um, there. So over the course of our work, we would have regular conversations with people who were involved in really cutting edge um, either drug development or medical technology. And one of the things that came up was the, just the question of whether or not Sorry, Richard. Um, whether or not the FDA is really keeping pace with medical innovation, especially when it comes to like genomics-based treatments for diseases. So as we started talking about this, and you know, there, we didn't really have an agenda in these conversations, but one of the things that we take really seriously is making sure that before we offer a policy proposal, we talk to the people that would be impacted by it. And so in the right to try context, that includes drug companies, drug manufacturers, and also physicians who would be offering treatment. So we started learning more and more about the drug development process. We learned about the FDA's expanded access program. And when we started getting into the details of that, and we heard that about 1,000 people a year at that time were making it, individuals, were making it through the individual application process for expanded access at the FDA, we thought, that just can't be right. That just can't be right that a thousand people individually are able to make it through an application process that's that's not okay right i mean look at how many of us are in this room right a, a thousand people in the whole country that just can't be that just can't be right there has to be something else out there and there wasn't and so we started thinking about how to solve that problem and one of the things that we came up with was this concept of right to try and here's what it is Right to Try says that if you are diagnosed as terminally ill and you have exhausted all treatment options and are unable to participate in a clinical trial, that you can work directly with your physician and a drug manufacturer to access a treatment that they have in an active phase two or phase three clinical trial. Okay, that's what it is. You have to be terminal. You have to have exhausted everything. You cannot be eligible for a trial. And the drugs have to be in ongoing FDA-approved, FDA-overseen uh, clinical trials in order to be eligible. So a couple of things that I just want to make sure that we put on the table right now out of the gate before we get deep into the conversation here. Um, right to Try does not take the place of the FDA Expanded Access Program. It's simply another pathway. If you are more comfortable going through the FDA application process, you absolutely can. This is not a replacement. It's in addition to just another option. And it doesn't challenge the FDA approval, um, like the ultimate approval for drugs at all. In fact, it relies on it. The only drugs that are available under Right to Try would be drugs in a phase two or a phase three trial. If for any reason the FDA puts a hold on a trial, a drug company decides they can't afford to go into a phase two or three trial, or the drug company pulls the drug themselves, whatever the case may be, if it's a not in an ongoing trial, it cannot be accessed. And the reason we did that is because we all want the same thing. We all want drugs ultimately to be approved to, that are safe and effective and available to everyone who needs them. This is definitely not a challenge to the FDA approval structure. The other thing that's really important to know is that that right to try is totally voluntary. If it seems like not a good idea to you for your personal treatment options, you don't have to do it. You don't have to ask for an investigational treatment. Your doctor has no obligation to try to make it happen for you. And a drug company, just like with the um, FDA expanded access program, if a drug company feels like their investigational treatment is not the right treatment for you, or they're just simply not ready to make it available outside of a clinical trial, they're not obligated to do it. It's totally voluntary. But what it does do is it says when you are fully informed of the risk, and your doctor and a drug company thinks that their investigational treatment might help you, you have the ability to, to pursue that treatment without sending an application to the federal government. Okay? Um, so, 
state legislation. Yep. Talk about that for 30 seconds. Next point. 38 states have adopted right to try already. We're waiting on the 39th. Um, in the next couple of days, that'll be Wisconsin. It passed the United States Senate last August unanimously. We're waiting on activity in the House. Um, and here, here's my final pitch to you, okay, as before we move on down the line. You're dealing with enough right now, right? You don't need to deal with an application to the federal government to save your life. If you are aware of the risk and your doctor and the drug company thinks that a treatment could help you, it should be up to you.